Hello guys. Well, I finally made it here. Um, I hiked down the tracks uh, for about an hour uh, to get to this spot, came down the hillside and I did slip <laughs> as I tend to do. And uh, anybody that's uh, done some hardcore fly fishing, uh, especially for brook trout, uh, they're not always easy to get to. That's a good thing because it helps protect the environment that they live in and, and eliminates a lot of guys from, from making the effort to do it. But if you're willing to make the effort, you can surely be rewarded with these little jewels called brook trout. They can be very easy to catch, I would say. You have to sneak up on them. So that's a difficult part is always maintaining a, a low profile and approaching them in the correct manner. But if you deliver enough, I should say deliver a good cast, you got an attractor fly on, you know, they're gonna they're gonna eat it most of the time, probably nine times out of 10, especially uh, this time of year. It is uh, September 5th, 2020. We're in autumn, we're heading into fall, and I'm not sure if they'll have their fall colors on yet, if they'll have those nice bright red bellies that they get. I think it's a little early still, but, uh, but we'll see. And I wanna extend a special thank you uh, to a gentleman who's a fishery biologist with the Maryland Department of Natural Resources. And he's done a lot of studies on brook trout. And I was actually able to get him on the phone and he was kind enough to direct me to this stream, this little creek. And he said, there's a very healthy population in this creek. And then in this area in particular, there's a lot of creeks, but that whole brook trout. So he used to put, uh, used to he probably still does but he puts radio transmitters in these brook trout and he's actually he wrote an article and just seeing how far they would actually travel and uh what their habits were and such and uh pretty interesting article um but anyways a special thank you to you uh matt sell uh once again fishery biologist and uh, we're going to have a great time today I, I really think we're going to catch a lot of fish and hopefully i'll get some good footage for you Man, I can tell you, this brookie slammed this caddis fly with a vengeance. Beautiful fish. So this is what I love about brook trout fishing. Um, like I said, if you get the fly to them without spooking them, uh, they're very opportunistic. And nine times out of 10, like I said, they're not selective. They're, they're gonna they're gonna take that fly, but, but the whole key is is just keeping a low profile. Now we have a gradient stream. It, it's coming down, so it's descending, and there's kind of like plunge pool after plunge pool. And what's neat is you can stay in the bottom plunge pool and cast above to the top one, uh, virtually uh, undetected. So that is one of the benefits of uh, fishing a gradient stream, and. Uh, the results are pretty good. I'm, I'm going to turn the camera around and what I'm going to do is I'm going to sneak on out there in my my hip waders, my trusty hip waders, and uh, I'm going to stay below the pool. It's actually on top. You can, you can see that pool on top.
So, what a great day here, uh, catching a lot of brook trout. Here in Maryland, once again, this is why I'm fishing. And uh, just a great stream. And uh, catching a lot of brook trout. And I just want to show you my setup. Um, I got this for small stream fishing. Uh, within striking distance of where I live in Columbus, Ohio right now. Uh, but I do have a second home in Colorado. And there's a lot of small creeks up there and streams, alpine stuff, where there's a lot of beautiful cutthroat trout. Um, so it's twofold, but it's an all around great creek rod. This rod was designed by Sage and it's part of their dart series. It's a two weight that I use and it's a seven and a half foot. They made it specifically for creek fishing. Um, the rod is a, is a joy to fish with. It has a lot of backbone to it. So you can deliver a, a nymph under a, a nymph dropper, dry dropper rig. Um, you can even do two small nymphs and an indicator. Uh, but it is a great, great, great rod. And of course the joy of fishing these small creeks and fishing for brook trout um, would be just putting on a single fly like I have here. And I have a, a Rapidin a tractor fly in a size 12. And I have a nine and a half foot leader. And it is a 5X leader. A lot of guys like a shorter leader. Uh, I tend to go with a little bit of a longer leader because I just I like that extra length. Uh, I think it creates less drag, and uh, a lot of times you'll come up on some real calm areas, and you need to deliver that fly without spooking them, having that leader to do that. Uh, but this is a great rod, and the reel is a Sage Flick reel, and it balances nicely with this two-weight rod. And I can't say enough good things about Sage products. I, I, I tend to like Sage a lot, so I tend to buy Sage stuff. But anyways, that, that's just me. There's a lot of good equipment out there. Um, the line itself, I've loaded the reel. Uh, this is a real creek line and a weight board. And this line was designed for casting in short distances with little creeks, so it works perfectly. It, it's married to this reel, the reel's married to the rod. The whole thing probably weighs, I gotta guess, I think I added it up. With the line, the reel, and the rod, I think we're at a little under four ounces. Um, or maybe just a little bit above, but it's a feather in my hand, and once again, it, it's a joy to fish. So, uh, I like equipment, I like good equipment, and uh, of course, we all buy what we can afford. It's a little, little bit on the high end side, but it's well worth it, I think, if you're really passionate about fishing. Here's the reward, another nice brook trout. Doing good today, catching a lot of fish, a lot of beautiful fish. And once again, I want to uh, just reiterate the environment that these brook trout like. They obviously like cold water. Uh, brook trout like really cold water and uh, to be in a high mountain elevation area typically you'll find them at a higher elevation but here we have a, a nice canopy and, and it's almost it's so invaluable that they had this thick canopy overhead and honestly barely any sun comes through which is really good for keeping that stream cool and uh, once again, making the environment good for a brook trout to thrive. Okay, you guys see the size of this? Brook trout. 
Jesus. He's a beast. He is a beast. 12 inches. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and talk about a little bit about uh, how I'm dressed on these brook trout streams. Uh, they're relatively relatively shallow. Uh, once again, uh, I just don't like to spook the fish, and that's me. I like to wear uh, camo myself. My camo shirt on, camo hat. I got camo waders on. It's a lot of camo. Does it make any difference? You know, a lot of guys say it doesn't, but to me, it makes a lot of sense to blend into your environment, especially in a, uh, a small creek a water system like this, which is typically shallow. I'm sure, you got some deep plunge pools, but uh, once again, I think any advantage you can have, I would certainly want to take it as, as a fisherman. Um, you want to walk up here and in a bright red shirt? I don't think so. A red hat? That doesn't work for me. But just wear subdued clothing, uh, earth tone clothing. Doesn't have to be camo, but but something kind of uh, that blends a little bit with environment. I think. I think that just gives you an edge, and I think we all want that edge, um, especially when it comes to if you want to catch that trophy brook trout. He's been around for a while. You know, maybe he's a little wiser. You don't want him to pick up on something flashy off in the side. Uh, they blend in with their environment. So why wouldn't you want to blend in with your environment when you're stalking them and trying to catch them? My thoughts. guys uh, looks like I'm pretty much uh, I'm done for the day I'm exhausted pretty tired and uh, been fishing all day and caught a lot of brook trout I do want to thank you for joining me this is my first show and I hope to do some more shows and uh, it was very eventful uh, beautiful country here and I just got to figure out how to how to get out of here now so it's, it's hillside behind me is really steep. It doesn't look too inviting. And if you can see this behind me, there's a big culvert coming out of here. That big pipe is draining into this big pool here. And I caught some fish out of this pool, uh, which was nice to end of the day. And well, that's about it. I, I don't know what else to say, but thank you so much. Uh, keep fishing. Uh, it's a great thing to do. Uh, especially right now with this uh, virus and everything. Um, what better social distancing than get out in nature and uh, enjoy yourself and take it in. It, it really, uh, it truly washes the soul. Thank you so much once again. My name is Greg Smith and take care. Till next time.